How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Backs to Riches podcast. We are live. I'm your host, Zach Ginn. Quick question for you. How would it feel if you didn't have to go out and manually attack and go after those leads every day? I'm talking, you don't have to go driving for dollars anymore. You don't have to go cold call thousands and thousands of leads every day. You don't have to put in that sweat into actually manually just going after those crazy deals, putting out bandit signs. How would it feel if for absolutely free, leads can be pouring into your Mm -hmm. website every single day and you can literally just build a business where leads just come to you. You don't have to worry about like going after and going after crazy amount of leads and it's extremely cheap and efficient. This is an SEO website. It's called carrot.com. I am ho- I'm hosting this podcast with our special guest, Trevor Mock from carrot.com. Trevor has one of the best lead generating software companies. I'm definitely butchering the amount of great stuff he has on his website, but he truly has helped thousands of real estate investors, wholesalers, investors, change their lives in their entrepreneurship journey in creating lasting income with SEO marketing. How's it going today, Trevor? Dude, Zach, I, I appreciate the invite on here, man. I'm I'm always excited to talk entrepreneurship and life and real estate stuff, man. So appreciate the invite. Oh yeah. I, I'm so honored to have you on. I've been trying to get you on for a while and we finally got a date. I'm so excited for this. So let, let's get, let's bring this all the way back. Who is Trevor? What's a, what's a carrot? Is that a vegetable? Like what, what is that? And how does it compare to real estate wholesaling? So dude, it's kind of funny. It's completely not related to real estate at all. So, um, when, when we bought carrot.com a few years ago, one, one of my goals was like, I want to own the word carrot, the color orange, all that in our industry. And I want, when you Google the word carrot, even though it has nothing, it won't make us any money, but I want when, like when you Google the word carrot, I want our site to be number one. And uh, we're not number one, but we're number two for the generic word carrot behind Wikipedia. So we're, we're, we're going after Wikipedia. But um, at, at a high level, man, so man, I, I've been an entrepreneur my, my whole life. I've never, um, I've never really had a job uh, from another person, which, which has pros and cons, right? It's like uh, you have to go through and it's trials and tribulations the whole time. Like you don't really have the luxury of seeing what a good leader is or a bad leader firsthand from someone else who led you or um, learning from mistakes firsthand from someone you're working with. And so um, I I wouldn't suggest that for most people. I'd suggest that people go and get a mentor or they find a person they really um, admire and and work for them for free for six months or something like that. But um, yeah, it took me probably a solid seven to eight years to see real success as an entrepreneur. Um, and we can talk more about kind of what 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 really triggered that and what made things work versus what didn't. If you guys want to, it as, as a big, so it applies to any entrepreneur in any in any, any business. But uh, Carrot is about my fourth business or so, and I took all the learnings on how on how I um, generated the most the, the highest quality leads in my previous companies, the most consistent, predictable lead flows in my previous companies, and I said, man, the next company I start. I wanted to match these five non-negotiables, and we can talk about those five non-negotiables here in a sec. But one, but a couple of those five non-negotiables were, man, my previous businesses were inconsistent, boom and bust, right? Because of my lead flow. And I said, this next business is going to be consistent and predictable, because uh, when you can do that, it's stress. It, the stress level is way lower. Uh, you can actually have freedom. You can actually have flexibility. Number two, I said no longer am I going to build a business that is just this hamster wheel of me just churning transactions. I'm going to build something that's a valuable asset that can serve my family and our community for a long time. And so that turned into Carrot in 2014, man. And today we we serve about 8,000 active real estate investors and now agents, uh, helping, helping them generate well over a million uh, inbound evergreen leads uh, each and every year um, online, mostly wow. household. Okay, so there's probably so many people here screaming at, at Trevor, like, oh my God, how do I get leads online with a website? I thought mm-hmm. I had to go cold call or stick bandit signs in the ground. What is how do you generate online leads in real estate wholesaling? Yeah. Well, dude, if if you're cool with it, um, am I able to share my screen on a couple things? Oh, yeah. Because I've got some cool, I've got some cool data because one of, one of the first things I always like to do is number one, and we, we, we can talk high level, you know, how, how to do this and we will. What's up, Eric? Um, and we will, but I want to show some data really quick so people can see 
um, so people can see what what we're looking at. All right, so I'm going to share this here. Let me just go ahead and bring up this data here. I'll get the StreamYard bubble away from that so I can still see it. So what you guys are seeing right now, uh, it's actually my Google Analytics. So uh, this is fully transparent, y'all. I'll show you other stuff if you want to see it. But this is inside of our Google Analytics for our Carrot clients websites, okay? And so this is from January 1st through today, uh, through right now. And I'll kind of break down the interesting parts of this. So um, first of all, it, it is pretty interesting kind of seeing what did happen around the COVID time period, right? So when COVID shut down started to, ha started to happen, we saw an immediate dip by about 20 to 30% in traffic. And then it picked back up and got bigger than pre-COVID, which was interesting. And then over here, uh, similar but different, as soon as COVID hit, conversion rates went down. Okay, so traffic picked up, but it took a while for conversion rates to come back up and they're still a little bit soft and I'll tell you guys why. But he, here, here is how people can generate leads online. Okay, the, there, there's several ways you can do it. You can do it through Facebook ads. Uh, you can do it through Google ads. So like the ads at the top of Google that, that you can just pay to be there. Uh, you can do it through you know what, what's called uh, SEO or search engine optimization, getting ranked organically to where you don't have to pay to be at the top of Google. Uh, that takes more work, but it's more evergreen. It, it's, it, it's, it's cheaper over the long run. Um, you can do other types of ads, things like that. But what I want to show you guys is, is this, is, is what's, what's more effective. Um, I accidentally clicked the wrong button. Hold on. Is, is what's more effective, okay? Because I want to make sure that as you guys are building your businesses, uh, that you guys choose the marketing that's going to help you get the lifestyle you want to get. And a lot of people don't realize that the way that we do our marketing actually dictates the lifestyle we get from our business, uh, not the other way around. I'll explain what that means. But let me show you guys this. So this over here is conversions. So in this time period, let me go back to Jan 1, sorry. When I went over that that window, dude, it, it bumped me out of this stuff. All right, there we go. Cool. This is going to take us through the whole year again. So <clears throat> through this year, this does not include phone call leads. Okay, this doesn't include phone call leads. So you can double this lead number here uh, to include leads that come in through a phone call. So, so far this year, it's about 459,000 leads. Now, most of those are motivated house sellers. Um, a good hunk of them are cash buyers or rent to own tenants. You can see the majority of the leads on the websites come through what's called direct. It's someone you know, directly put in, putting in a URL. It could be someone already knows about the brand. It could be someone saw a radio ad or TV or you know, whatever it is. Uh, or uh, Google actually includes some, of, some organic leads in direct as well. But this is what's important here is organic search is when someone goes to Google, um, Zach, they type up a phrase like sell my house fast Dallas, or mm -hmm. you know, selling an in inherited home in Milwaukee, or how to sell a house and divorce in Phoenix, Arizona, or phrases like that. And we can show you guys some stuff. And then they land on a website, and the website is structured in a way that answers their questions, that builds trust and credibility, and gives them a really easy, clean, uh, slim, uh, streamlined way for them to engage with your website. And this right here is the result of that. So on average, organic traffic, people who make a Google search, converts almost double or sometimes more than double uh, than any other lead source. Wow. So if we're talking about Google paid, so paid search. Uh, on average, it's you know about double uh, conversion rate on organic. Um, if we're gonna talk about social media, we're talking about a 30 to 50% difference in the conversion rate. Uh, why is this important? And I'm going to, I'll end the screen share. Why is this important? Uh, it's important because the quality of your leads, okay, the quality of your leads increase when someone chases you down. Sorry, in, increase when someone chases you down versus you chasing them down. And organic is strictly someone chasing you down and saying, I want to do business with you uh, versus you having to knock on doors or cold call or text or hide behind your know, text message number, numbers because you don't want to have people know that it's, it's you because it might be illegal in certain states. It's like inbound marketing when people do a Google search and find you is the highest quality leads, the most motivated, the highest margin, and the easiest ones to work with. Wow. I've, I'm beyond impressed by that. I, I don't think I've ever seen the numbers of a carrot online site, the conversions. If I had to tell you, uh, this is embarrassing. Like when I was 17 cold calling at wholesaling, how many cold calls I had to make to convert a deal? It was mm -hmm. less than less than a percent. That is amazing. So 
what would the difference be if just a regular Joe Schmo goes out there? He knows SEO is cool and he's just going to write a couple articles for himself, maybe throw some testimonials on a WordPress. Yeah. What's the difference between someone doing that versus going on carrot.com and actually creating a site? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's a really valid question, man. So we've got, we've got a, a lot of clients who had built custom websites, you know, they're big investors, Carter Steph, as an example, he owns, um, he owns 1-800-2 cell homes um, in Oklahoma. And now they branch out to different states. They, you know, they're multiple, multiple, multiple seven figure a year business. And so Carter had a $10,000 custom site. He had the money to do it. Um, and it was converting leads. But what he discovered Zach was, he didn't realize how much how much money and leads he was leaving on the table because it wasn't optimized for for the highest level of performance, and that that's the biggest thing we focus on. Zach is is anybody can go out there and build a site, right? Like your cousin Eddie can go build you a Wix site, and we'll see that all the time. Where it's like, oh my my you know my cousin or my uncle or whatever built me one for two hundred fifty bucks. I'm like, that's amazing, um, but the question is, is it built for performance? And how many leads and deals are you okay with losing this year? because of our performance. And if you, it, let's kind of work some numbers here. If your average profit per deal, let's say is 20,000 bucks, which for many people that is it, or let's go down to 10 grand, let's be even more conservative. If your average profit per deal is $10,000 and, and you look at it and go, cool, I've got a website and it's up and it looks pretty and it's getting some leans versus a website that really is dialing in for performance. And I'll talk, it, I'll, I'll tell you guys the exact things you can do to dial in your website for performance. Um, and if you lose just one deal a year, just one deal a year, if you lose a deal because that, that cheap website isn't dialed in for performance, it just costs you 10 or $20,000. And so when, when Carter was looking at his numbers and we did a case study on this, you guys can, can find it. Just Google Carter Steph, S T E P H, uh, carrot, you know, just Carter Steph carrot. You'll find his YouTube video come up there. Um, he moved over to carrot in a test and he ended up discovering within about a month or two that he was losing somewhere between 20 and $30,000 a month in revenue and lost revenue because his other pretty website wasn't converting as well as it should have. Um, he found that his, his visitor to, to, to conversion ratio. So someone landing on the website and then they input their information almost doubled on his carrot site. Wow. Um, and then he found that once they actually became a lead, and this is the thing most people don't think about Zach is one, once they actually became a lead, uh, his lead to close ratio also doubled. And so we're not talking Zach that like, we're not talking that he added a new marketing source. All he did was straight up switch his website to carrot with his existing marketing. He was doing direct mail, radio and TV in his market. That's what was, what was working in his, his market. And then that existing traffic just converted far, far, far better by moving over. And like I said, I, I can walk you through some of the, some of the exact things people can do on their websites to make them perform better. But that's the big difference, dude, is, is I think people look at a website as a website and they say, well, I've got a website up and I mean, you can get to model some th stuff, but little tiny tweaks here and there uh, compounded over dozens of tiny tweaks could be losing you one to 10 to 20 deals a, a year. And you can add that up um, with your average profit deal, how much money you're losing. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, I can talk to you forever about optimizing websites. Honestly, if you go to carrot.com, sign up, there's a million guys on in the carrot community that will literally help you so much individually. Yep. I mean, the, the one last question I have before we kind of hop on, because I'm telling you right now, I don't know how many eight figure entrepreneurs that I have on this podcast. And there's some amazing gold nuggets I know you can give. How can a person like me Let's say I live in Houston, Texas. Crazy, crazy big market. I know there's a million carrot guys on there. Yep. How do I hop in that business, just waltz in there, and how do we become one of the top SEO guys of We Buy Houses Cash Houston? Mm. How does somebody do that? Dude, that, that's such a good question, man. Um, let, let me let me step back one, one step a little bit, and then I'm going to directly answer that question because uh, it's a really good question. So the, the first question I would ask is, you know, that there's probably people on here going like, why the heck do I, why should I fiddle with online stuff? Right? Like why, why should I do SEO? People are saying Google pay-per-click is expensive. I tried Facebook ads and it didn't work or, you know, whatever it is. And, um, the, the main, there's a couple main reasons. I think everybody should be seriously looking at, at your strategy going into 2021 about how you are going to build more trust, credibility, and close more deals in this environment. So we're, we're in an environment right now, Zach, 
where everybody picks up their cell phone and researches the crap out of everything, right? Like if, if you're doing direct mail, if you're doing cold calling, if you're doing uh, RVMs or text message marketing, I can guarantee you a bunch of your people that you're sending to, whether you, whether you include your website on there or not, like that, a lot of people go, well, I don't include my website on there. You know, it doesn't matter whether you include your website on there or not. They're picking up their cell phone or their computer and they're Googling your phone number that you just cold called from because they're like, who's this person calling me? I want to find out who it is. Or they're going to Google the phone number that came from the text message. I did it yesterday. Okay. I was getting blown up by this phone number. Someone called me two times in a row. I'm like, who is this thing? I'm not going to answer it. <clears throat> Almost no one answers phones anymore. Right. It's like, I'm not going to answer it. So I went to Google, typed in their phone number and I found out who it was. I'm like, okay, cool block. I don't want to hear from them. And <clears throat> what, what's happening with a lot of people right now, because people are getting a lot of cold calls is they're doing that online research to vet and verify whether they want to end up working with that, that person or not. And I want to, I want to ask you guys, um, if you're doing cold calls or text message marketing, have you guys actually typed in your phone number that is showing up in caller ID or that you're texting from? Type it into Google and search it. Just literally type that up and see what comes up. And what's likely going to come up is a whole page of like scam call website stuff because you're probably using tracking phone numbers, right? And you, sh you should be using tracking phone numbers. But because tracking phone numbers get swapped and traded and there's different owners of those numbers over years, you're going to end up seeing a bunch of uh, things in there that say scam call, da 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 Even though you guys are not a scam, that's what's going to show up. And so you're losing deals by ignoring the online side of the equation with your offline marketing. Offline marketing drives online demand. Okay. Another way is people might be Googling your company name. They might be Googling your personal name. Um, a, a good example, we have a client down in, in Tennessee, uh, 299cash.com. They're the largest home buyer in the, in the Nashville market. And when we were working with them doing research, uh, we were finding out like, are people typing in your company name or express home buyers as a client of ours? Or are they typing in your, their company name? Well, what happens is guys and gals, you'll see uh, express home buyers reviews pops up as a really suggest as a suggested search from Google or 299 cash reviews or Dan Lane, the actual owner of the company, cause he's in the TV commercials, Dan Lane real estate. And so people are researching the guy or the company before they make a decision so they can then determine whether to do business with you. That's their offline marketing driving online demand. So you've got to get that taken care of. Um, so now let's, let's lead into uh, answering your question earlier is let's say you're in a really competitive market and how do you compete against the other people in it? Right? So number one, um, I think there's part of it's a mindset shift for all as all of us as entrepreneurs to make is most wholesalers, especially newer ones, which which I think um, we, we've all got to start in, in, in a spot. But especially the newer ones, uh, most wholesalers don't really try to differentiate their offering very much from the other. It's I'll buy your house for cash. I can close quickly. And that's pretty much it. Right. So if, if you're in Houston or Dallas or whatever market it is, it doesn't matter what marketing you're doing you're going to have to find ways to differentiate. Okay, you've got to build credibility, you've got to build trust, and we can talk about ways you can do that on, on this podcast, like specific ways you guys can do it today. Um, and so it doesn't matter if you're doing cold calling, direct mail, or any of those, you're going to have to find ways to differentiate from the other hundreds or thousands of wholesalers in your market. So now with the online side of it, um, let me, uh, let, let's go to Dallas, which is near Houston. I'm, I'm gonna tell a couple stories about Dallas. So. Dallas is probably the market that has more carrot members in it than anybody, right? It's like, it, it's got a lot of carrot members in it. And the first thing I always like to say, Zach is, um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're driving a race car, um, and you're in the Indianapolis 500 and this one race car over here has been proven to win. It's won like the last 10 Indianapolis 500s in a row, right? This race car with these tires and these wheels and da, 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 the only thing that's really different is the driver and the stickers on the outside. Right mm -hmm. now, if you saw that and that wins 10, you know, every single year, 10 years in a row, and then you, you see this other race car over here, that's different. It looks different. It's got a different engine and you go, you know what? I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do this one over here. Cause it looks different because it's just different. And everyone else is using this one, even though it's winning all the time, everyone else is using this. one. I'm just going to use this other one over here. Uh, that's the equivalent that I, that I find where people, where people are making that decision to go, well, should I go with carrot or should I go, go this other route? Because everyone's using carrot. I, the first, I would ask you the question of is carrot winning and controlling the conversation dominating in that market in Google? Just type in sell my house fast, insert your city, 
you know, we buy houses, insert your city, cash home buyers, insert your city. Those phrases that a motivated house seller would type in and then see how many carrot sites control the top, you know, page one of Google. So if, if your answer to that question is, oh my gosh, carrot is that winning race car, then the decision you have to make is, do you want to be at a disadvantage by being in a race car that is not tuned to perform? Or do you want to, do you want to level the playing field and get in that same race car that's won 10 years in a row? And then the next thing that you do is you say, okay, now that, I've, now, now that I'm in the, in the winning race car, now that I've got the tool that performs the best, um, how do I differentiate it? How do I put the different stickers on it? How do I make it mine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but in Dallas, dude, we had probably 150 customers in there before one of our clients named Brian Rockwell came into the market. And we've done case studies on Brian, uh, several of them. And he's doing great. He's, he's actually moved into multifamily now. And this is three years ago. He was a school teacher, man. He'd, he'd been putting off uh, diving into real estate for 13 years, studying the heck out of it. He could probably answer all the questions on the forums, but he just was nervous to dive in and take the first step. Mm. And so for him, uh, he saw the first action of, let me just go out and do anything to get my first deal. So Zach, he, he literally drove around his neighborhood in Dallas and on the, on the way to and from school, he would take a different route every time. He would write down addresses. He would go home, he would hand write letters uh, send them. And after he sent about 150 letters, handwritten letters to houses that he wrote down, he ended up closing his first deal. Uh, he was a really shy guy. Uh, he ended up netting about 8,000 from that first deal. But then for him, he's like, dude, I don't want to do that ever again. I, I don't want to have to build my business off of me driving around all the neighborhoods, writing letters, sending them out. And he, and he started to do research. He said, with, with my personality, I'm not a big outgoing guy. Um, how can I leverage the internet to do the same thing, but more effectively and have people come to me instead of me have to drive by them. And so he did the research. He saw some case studies, said, Hey, other people have done it just like me. He joined carrot. He went through our training, our three lead per day training, which teaches you how to do the SEO side step by step. He then said, you know what? I know I need to get leads quick because SEO does take time in a market like Dallas is probably going to be your eight to 12, eight to 14 month mark of executing SEO well to get momentum. But man, when you get momentum, dude, it's like game over. Um, so then he he said, okay, I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to execute the plan that Carrot teaches me. And he just treated it like it was his homework, you know? And then number two, he said, I want to get leads now. So he took some of that budget from that first deal that he did, that 8K. And he said, I'm going to take half of that and put it into Google ads in my market. And then he went and worked with us to find a good person who could launch his Google ads from him for him. And in the case study we show... Like I said, he was probably 100, uh, 150th or 200th uh, carat customer in Dallas. He pulled out $660,000 in revenue, uh, over 300,000 in net profit in the first 12 months. Now, wow. is that gonna happen to everybody? No, dude, like <laughs> he, he was serious. He 100% committed. He's like, dude, I'm gonna treat this like it is my, like it is my job. Like making carrot work is my job right now. It's not a matter of if this works, I know it works. I see the data, I see the people doing it, I see the case studies. It's, am I gonna make a commitment to make this work for me? His SEO started to pick up that back half of the year. Year two, uh, he did a little bit more revenue. Year three now, he's acquired over 500 multifamily units with his wholesale revenue that he's cranking through. Um, and he still closes, you know, six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year uh, just from SEO and Google pay per click. So wow. number two, let me double down on the sack. We have an event called Carrot Camp. We do twice a year. It's like one of my favorite things I do. Um, and Carrot Camp, we had a, a guy named Adam Mitchell, and I think we just posted that case study up on our on our website, carrot.com. Find the blog over there. But Adam Mitchell, um, and he's also from Dallas. Okay, he still has a full time job. Um, his first year in investing, he listened to all the gurus and he did everything. He did direct mail, did cold calling, did text message marketing. He did bandit science. He did SEO, did PPC. And in that podcast, in, in that, in that uh, case study, he's like, dude, I did all those things because all the gurus were saying to do them. And he ended up dropping 40 K in the Dallas market in the first year, uh, and lost it all. He closed one deal. I think brought him in eight K. And so he looked at it and said, I can't do this again for a year or two, otherwise my wife's gonna kill me. And so he said, what was the one marketing method that seems like it's gonna be more consistent, more predictable? Let me go all in on that in year or two, which would have been 2019. He went all in on Carrot, exactly followed the same model Brian did in the exact same market, okay? Exact same market. 
Um, he pulled out, I think it was um, 10 or 15 deals in year two. He's on pace for 39 deals right now, uh, 2020, and over a half a million dollars in net profits in the wow. exact same market using the exact same tool. All he did was just execute the plan and didn't have let those limiting beliefs get in his way. Wow. That's impressive. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think one of your most important values for you is changing entrepreneurs' lives. I mean, is there one certain story? I know you have a million, I mean, thousands and thousands of Carrot members. Is there one story or testimonial or case study that really resonated with you the most and really, you know, changed you at all? Dude, um, that's, that's a really good question, man. It's like, I, I I, I get the question quite often in Italy, not that question. I, I get the question quite often of like, um, you know, Trevor, you, you, you've got a bigger business now. Um, a, a lot of, a lot of the goals I had set Zach, like, honestly, I surpassed like almost every financial goal that I had set several mm -hmm. years ago. And so you have to have, you have to continually have new reasons yeah. um, to continue to show up to work, to be motivated. And so that question you asked is, is the spark of it. So there's a client named Keith Sant, uh, S-A-N-T. And um, Keith is just hot in my mind right now because him and I are, are going, we're, we're doing a physical challenge right now in the month of December to kind of get momentum going through. But Keith came to uh, the last carrot camp and he came to the carrot camp before that. So he's been to two carrot camps in a row. And when he applied to the, uh, the carrot camp, I guess it would have been the fall uh, fall 2019 carrot camp. Um, in his application, he said, uh, you know, eight months ago, I hadn't done any deals. I hadn't closed any revenue, but I was listening to the carrot cast and I discovered about the carrot camp. And he said, I discovered that I had to earn a hundred thousand dollars minimum with my real estate business to, to qualify for carrot camp. And he goes, that created my goal. Okay. Within wow. eight months of, of hearing that episode, he's like, I'm going to dig in and execute what they teach. And he, um, the month before he showed up to Carrot Camp, he had his first hundred thousand dollar month. Okay, Ooh. not thousand dollar year. He had his first hundred thousand dollar month the month before he showed up to Carrot Camp. And this is what's inspiring the most, Zach. Is this is is when he showed up in into that uh, he had he had crushed these goals. Um, Carrot was a big part of it, but he's a big Bandit Sign guy too. Like he crushes it with Bandit Signs. Where he's at. Um, but he came into care camp going, you know what? I hit this goal of a hundred thousand a month. And he thought like the clouds would part. He thought his life would just be different all of a sudden. Right. And he said it was the most miserable month that I've ever had. Wow. He said that hundred thousand dollar a month, man, was the most miserable. He said, I didn't have time for people that I cared about. He said, I was working 60, 70, 80 hours, hours a week during that, that month. He said, I wasn't taking care of myself. And he said, if this is what business is, is like or, or hitting that high income goal is like, he's like, I don't want it. I just want to dial the business back and do one or two deals a month. And so at Care Camp, we had a chance to talk about it. We said, well, let's really talk about what you want out of your business. Like, what do you want? Do you want to just do a bunch of deals? Because a lot of wholesalers, especially, um, they kind of compare deals, you know, deal volume. Man, I do two deals a month or 10 or one or whatever. And I'd say, Keith, the number of deals you do a month doesn't matter. Like, that, that's just a vanity number. What matters is, what lifestyle do you want and what impact do you want to make and what income is required for you? What, what income do you need to earn to, to, to unlock that lifestyle and impact? And he said, well, dude, I definitely want to want to impact my community the way that you guys do at Carrot. And I've got some ideas. And he said, I want to buy back half of my time so I can just do the things I want to do. You know, hang out with my girlfriend, um, you know, do my hobbies, bike riding, stuff like that. And so we mapped out a plan and the other Carrot campers there mapped out a plan. So I, how we can get his time back. Zach, he comes back for care camp number two. He works 20 hours a week. He closed eight deals last month. Okay. So he went from 60 hours a week to 20 uh, by dialing in his processes and systems. He got a business partner that was kind of the yin to his yang also. Um, his SEO with Carrot has picked up and he sent me this text message. Um, I think it was a text message. Let me find it. Shout out uh, to Keith. <laughs> dude, uh, big, big time. And th this, this right here isn't where it, where it ends. So um, he sent me this text message. He said, I've got it. I've got it pulled up here. He said that three lead per day training paid off. So the three lead per day training I talked about before, uh, he said, yesterday was my first three organic lead day, two SEO leads, one Google, my business lead and one buyer lead. I'm so pumped, not slowing down. Um, and then I literally got a, a text message from my assistant today because we had these wildfires 
um, in September that just decimated parts of our area. 100, 110 homes were burnt up. This huge wildfire got just three miles. I mean, literally, if I open up oh my gosh. the mountain behind me is scorched. There's a 140,000 acre fire. And one of my most favorite places on earth uh, that I took Keith to while he was here for carrot camp called the Steamboat Inn. Um, they didn't burn down, thankfully, but all their water lines are scorched. A bunch, a bunch of their infrastructure is scorched. They launched a GoFundMe, and I tossed out a challenge to the carrot customers. I said, anybody who uh, ponies up 10 grand to help this, um, this amazing uh, small boutique hotel that's been in our area for 60 years with just three owners, this young, this young family that just bought it with two young girls and their the insurance isn't covering it. They're $200,000 in debt trying to get this place back going. Like anyone who ponies up 10 grand, I'll fly you down here. We'll go fly fishing. We'll mastermind, you know, for a day in the office. I get a text immediately from Keith, dude. He's like, he's like, this is me shifting my business uh, from income to impact. Wow. And so that, that kind of story is what pumps me up. Like, I know a lot of people, dude, who who do seven figures a year and are absolutely miserable. That doesn't excite me. Like that's not what business is about. But what excites me is people purposefully looking. Why do I want to do wholesaling? Why do I want to flip houses? Why do I, why do I want to be a real estate agent? Walking that backwards and say, what is the lifestyle that I want to live and what's the impact I want to make? And now saying, what income do I need in order to get there? And then building a business specifically to get you there, not for uh, ego reasons. Wow, I. That's amazing. Wow. So another question I really have for you is this is something I can't relate to. This is, I don't, there's not a lot of guys doing the type of business that you're doing. Uh, something I really love about you is you spend a lot of time with your family and you really instill those values with your family. How do you spend time with your family and how do you instill those values that you really give to us entrepreneurs onto mm -hmm. your kids? Because there's a lot of fathers, mothers on here that they don't know how to bring entrepreneurship to them. They don't want to force it. How are you doing that? And how are you kind of balancing family and work? Yeah, I'll, I'll answer the second one first, man. It's it's a it's a continual dance. You know, it's like <laughs> you, you'll you'll think you've got it figured out one season of life, and and then something changes. COVID happens, you know, whatever it is, and and uh, and in, then you end up falling into a a pattern where you need to fix things again in two or three months. But I'll tell you what, I, I don't know if, I don't know if other people can resonate with this, but COVID was an amazing blessing for our family anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, not, you know, not, I'm, I'm not talking the sickness. I'm talking the fact that we had to be locked down and we couldn't go places. Uh, the, sick, the sickness is terrible and, and so many people are being impacted. But as a family, dude, I, I haven't traveled outside of the state of Oregon since February. And usually I travel probably eight or 10 times a year. Um, it's given us a really good chance just to kind of find a new cadence for, for family and realize, man, it's like, um, how can we make sure to not lose some of these new rituals that we created during COVID uh, and carry some of them forward? You know, a lot of people talk about the new normal, right? And they, and they almost talk about it as a bad thing. And I said, well, I, honest, I honestly don't want to have part of our lives go back to the old normal. Like there's mm. some parts of our lives where uh, I work from home more now than I did before. I've got a big office in town and I'll work in there two days a week now before I was in there five days a week. And so I get to be, be home with family more. I'm at my house right now. Um, some other things, Zach, that, that, that have worked really, really well. Um, this would have been probably in 2016. Um, the first two years of starting Carrot, you know, just like a lot of entrepreneurs, he's in hustle mode, you know, it's like had my head down. Um, I was working a lot of hours. I didn't really care. I was working a lot of hours because it was interesting and it was exciting. And it's like a puzzle. You're trying to fix something. You're trying to like make something work, you know? And so I didn't mind if I had to stay up till one, two, three in the morning, two or three nights a week to finish that article or to, to do the whatever, or help a customer. Um, and I remember in 2016, very vividly me thinking, it's like, and at that time, so I've got a six, eight and 10 year old now. So 2016, they would have been, um, six, four, and two. My math is right. And, um, and I remember one time after pulling one of those really late night vendors, you know, where, where I had to get an article done because that's the way that we grow our business with evergreen, evergreen marketing, the same way that we teach our clients to grow your businesses, put content online that people are wanting that answers questions, your best prospects, get it ranked in Google. They come find you, you convert like guys that we built the business the exact same way that we teach people. Okay. And so I'd be writing articles. I'd put it out there. 
I knew I knew it would start to rank in Google using our system. People would find it. And I remember going, hopping in the car the next morning because uh, we're going to go uh, drive from my parents' house, which is like over the mountains, a few hours. Driven the road a million times. And it was up in, up in the mountains, you know, where there's guardrails and ravines and it's windy. And I remember thinking, you know, that you know previous time period before that, like as long as the hustling I'm doing, the grinding I'm doing isn't impacting my family, I can handle it, right? Mm-hmm. I can handle it. I can put up with it. As long as it's not impacting them, it's fine. Uh, I'll just, I'll open up my computer at 10 o'clock after hanging out with my, my wife and putting the kids to bed. And then I'll work until midnight or one or two o'clock. Like that was kind of my cadence a lot because it wasn't impacting my family, right? So back to the story, was driving through the mountains and one second I was awake and the next second I wasn't. I had my three kids in the back. My wife was over there in the next seat. She was reading. Nobody saw it. My kids were sleeping. My wife was reading. And then just like in the movies, dude, it's like I woke up in the exact time, the exact perfect time to see the guardrail in front of me. There's a ravine on the other side of it. No guardrail like 40 yards down and no guardrail 40 yards up. And I swerve, scrape the bumper on the car. We still have the car out there with the exact same scrape on it. And I scrape it. I'd stop dead in the middle of the highway without saying a word. And what's going through my mind is like, I almost killed my family. You know, my my work ethic and me thinking that all that work and work-life balance uh, was happening by me working late. I wasn't impacting my family. almost killed everybody. I got out, walked around. My wife took over. Uh, driving the rest of the way. I didn't drive a family trip for probably six months. Um, and as, as immediately when I got home, Zach, and this is a tip I give to everybody, immediately when I got home is this, is I made a vow to not bring my computer into my house or work nights or weekends anymore. So wow. from 2016 on uh, until about a year ago, I didn't work one night or one weekend. Um, and for me, th- this is what helped get get better life balances there was a very clear distinction between where I was working or when I was working and when I was not. Um, I immediately went out and got an office. I was just a shared office with someone who paid a few hundred bucks a month for it. And I'm like, this is where I work and this is where I live. And those are clearly distinct things. Cause when you have this really blurred line, uh, you're out there working and living in the same space. It's not conducive to you. Your kids walk up to you like, Hey dad, I want to hang out with you, but you're like, I'm working and it's just not good for anybody. Um, Last thing on that is if you can't go out and get an office space, have a clearly defined space in your home somewhere where that's where you work and you don't do anything else there and you don't work in, in your bedroom, you don't work you know, in the, on the couch, you don't do those types of things. So figure out your cadence right now. I understand people, you got to hustle, right? So if you have a full-time job right now and you're going, well, how the heck am I going to hustle and get this business going if I can't work nights or weekends? In the early days, you probably got to. Right? You've got to work some nights and weekends to get the momentum going. So you have to. That's how I got Carrot going. Uh, but you have to you have to recognize the impact that, that it is having on you and your, your family and change it as soon as you can. Wow. I I did not know that story. That that's insane. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that is emotional. But um okay. So really my my last question for you here is if you had a time machine. You're able to go back in time. Let's say you could talk to your 18 year old self, getting started on this entrepreneurship journey. What would what, what would you tell yourself? What would you tell Trevor, 18 year old Trevor, knowing what you know today, the trials, the tribulations, and everything? What what would you say, dude? Um, that's a really good question, man. And if you would have asked me this a year ago, I would have had a tough time answering. Honestly, um, I've I've gotten a little bit more conviction and clarity just this past year or so. The, the biggest thing I would have told myself then was um, two things, but it's wrapped in the same theme is think, think I, I read this book by Simon Sinek recently called the infinite game and the infinite game completely changed the way that I, I think about business and life. And essentially I would have told myself, um, don't be so caught up in, in reaching and hitting goals as like the measure of your worth. Um, don't get so caught up in if, if I, if I reach this, if I hit this, then this will happen. If, if I, if I hit this goal, then you know, I'll finally be happier. If I, if I hit this revenue mark, then I'll finally give, uh, to charities. Or if I hit this blah, um, what life is and what life should be, it's an infinite game. It's not a finite game in, 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 a, in a finite game, there's winners and losers. 
in a finite game, you you have the there's there's the exact same uh, players competing. Like in a basketball game, you can't swap out uh, 45 different players. Like it's a defined 15 players that sit on the bench and and they get swapped out. Right? You, you can't swap out uh, different teams during the middle of a basketball game. It's like two teams you're playing. Uh, there's a defined end point to a basketball game. When when the when the basketball game is over, there's a winner or loser. With business, dude, there's no finite end point to it. Like it goes forever. And I think I think we put so much pressure on ourselves as entrepreneurs to hit this revenue goal. And if we don't hit it just right, we feel bad about ourselves. And I spent so many years, Zach, running running businesses, including Carrot, uh, where in the early years, and I'll kind of get caught into it sometimes. Where I'm like, man, we 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 have this revenue goal that we set, and we didn't hit it, but we were really close. But we grew more than we ever grew, and we were amazingly profitable, the best business year I ever ever had. And I felt bad, I felt crappy. I'm like, man, we didn't hit our goal though. And in in, in the new mindset I operate by is I pull back and I go, okay, uh, the goals for keeping score and and to help us make sure to give us a target. But did we make progress? Like, did we did we grow? If we grew and made progress and we feel like we're getting momentum, do game on. That's what it's about. So focus on momentum versus hitting goals. Wow. That that's powerful right there. Uh, I think if anyone wants to know about entrepreneur entrepreneurship or growing, uh, you're definitely the guy for it. Um, you're still active on the carrot YouTube, correct? Yep. And yep. yeah, I, I mean I, I go in a bind sometimes just watching everything you talk about, entrepreneurship, growing a business, things like that. You're, you're just a wealth of information and I, I really truly appreciate you coming on and honestly on behalf of me because I've seen it before behind me saying that carrots cool and all I mean I'm not getting affiliates or anything honestly you've changed a lot of people's lives I think you're getting closer to that goal of just helping more and more people I just I truly appreciate everything you're doing for this business and honestly the impact that you're getting on everyone do that that means a lot to me man like, like I said Zach I mean this, this is why I do what I do. Um, you know, most of the time when I come on, I don't dive into detail teaching people how to, how to get a lead here or there. We've got all kinds of free trainings and all that stuff, right? Like I've got a webinar tomorrow, uh, at one o'clock, uh, that's all about that. And so if people want to, people want to do that, you know, um, join me there. But, uh, on, on these, on these types of podcasts, the thing that pumps me up the most is just making sure that the people when, when they're becoming entrepreneurs or when they are entrepreneurs, they don't let the entrepreneurial dream um, leave. They 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 don't they, they don't build a business that they end up resenting. They don't build a business that that ends up actually trapping them uh, versus freeing them. And that's the thing that's that I'm most passionate about, dude. Is is helping be, build, build helping people build businesses that give them freedom and impact. Because so many people build businesses that have these amazing numbers, but they're completely trapped and miserable in their business. And that's not not what I want for anybody. Um, last, last comment on that is people might say like, why does it matter to you, Trevor? Well, um, I honestly do feel that business, uh, is the greatest tool for impact in the world. Um, I think that businesses, uh, small businesses as well, especially during the COVID environment, we can impact our communities in amazing ways, ways that government can't. Mm. Um, and I think we can only truly use our businesses for impact when we have the freedom to do so and our business is set up in a way that gives us freedom and doesn't trap us. Um, and we get ourselves out of the mindset of ego driven uh, goals and goals that are driven around impact that you want to make. So guys go out there and change your business, change your life, uh, change your community. Wow. On behalf of that, thank you so much, Trevor. I really appreciate everything you're doing and guys check them out. Carrot.com carrot everywhere. This dude literally bought the website carrot. Probably one of the most unbelievable things um, I've seen in wholesaling uh, in this industry is just the branding and the amazing th stuff you're doing. Can't wait to see how you're going next year and absolutely the impact you're making. Thank you so much, Trevor. Zach, I appreciate it, man. Everybody appreciate the heck out of you guys. Go out there and do some amazing things. Hit me up if I can help you. Thank, Thank you. you.